Hey everybody, it's Presley Gokino. So now we're going to talk about the web portfolio, the electronic web portfolio. So it doesn't have to only be for designers and photographers. You can put up PDFs, uh, you can put up writing samples, you can put up press releases. Um, you know, the sky's the limit of what you can put up there and design elements. So why do you need one? Um, well, it is a website, you know, it's a place for you to have a repository of um, your works and your portfolio samples. You also have the capability of a blog where you can um, write and uh, use that to network. You have a resume there so people know who you are and what you do, what skills you have that you can offer them. And it's kind of like your electronic calling card. So the first thing I would recommend you do is some Google searches and take a look at other people who are in the same field you're in um, and see what they've got. See what's out there, what professional people are doing with their web portfolios. You can also look at sites like Wix and Adobe Creative Cloud Express. Um, see what other, uh, again, individuals working in your area have posted. So why reinvent the wheel? Uh, if you use Wix or Adobe Creative Cloud, you can work with a uh, portfolio that has been templated and designed by a professional designer so that you don't really have to worry so much about the design phase and you can really jump in with filling it up with, with content. What you want to do is make sure you show your best projects. A lot of people may not look deeply into your site, so you want to have your best stuff right up front so that you can engage them right away and catch their attention and keep it as long as you can to get them to look at your other stuff. Um, it's probably a good idea to add a narrative to each piece that you put in there. So a little bit of description of what the piece is, um, what its goals were, um, what the context was, if you were working for a client, if you did it as a school project, um, those kind of details actually personalize it a little bit more and again make it a little bit more engaging for the audience. Now as far as structuring the site, um, you want to have a couple of typical pages. The landing page or the home page is kind of uh, you know something that's a definite necessity. It's going to give your first impression and uh, then you have your about page where you can go into a little more detail about yourself and what you do and what you can offer. Then of course the meat of it is going to be your samples, your work samples. So a variety of different samples you want to show your skills in different areas. So maybe something in video production, something in uh, still photography, something in design, something in writing. Um, so a couple of different areas where you can really show your skills. And then the blog. Um, I like a testimonial page that really kind of um, shows that clients really like your work and people that you've worked with. Doesn't have to be clients. It can also be people that you work with or network with on your team. And then of course the contact page. How people are going to find you, to work with you, to hire you. Uh, you want to make sure that that is very clear. Okay, so the home page, keep it simple. Um, you want to grab their attention, but you also want to have a fairly easy navigation. So uh, here's an example where you know any number you click on takes you to a different part of uh, the site, and it's pretty obvious, it's pretty clean, it's pretty clear where you're going with it. Next is the about page, and I put up another sample here. Um, this is where you can talk about who you are, what you've done, what you can do, skills and achievements. You can kind of paraphrase your resume in there, actually copy and paste it in there, or have a link to it so people can download it if they want to. And you can see that here, um, and you know, a basic bio, a photograph if you like. Um, the next thing, of course, is the work samples, and you know we talked about that. And you want to really, you know, again have a variety of different samples and highlight your uh, kind of creativity and your versatility here. Testimonials, I like them because they give you a sense of authenticity. Um, you can mention known clients. You can include logos from different organizations that you work for. Give it a little bit of a kind of brand recognition. 
And then the blog, again, shows people that you are active in that industry, that you are, um, you know, constantly um, involved in it. You're creating, you're um, always honing your skills. And this is also a way for uh, the search engine optimization. So when you write things like that in there, um, it helps a search engine help other people to find you. So uh, you always want to make sure that when you have pictures, you add the alt text description and um, any other kind of captions and descriptions that you can add to it will help in search engine optimization. And now the contact form, wrapping things up. You know, you want to obviously have your email, your phone number, your social media links, and they can all be kind of built into that contact form so people know how to get a hold of you. So again, I'm recommending a um, either Wix or Adobe Creative Cloud. Now, we already did one in, in Creative Cloud where um, you did that single web page and um, you know that's one way you can go. It's great. Um, it's simple. It's clean. It's clear. Wix is a little bit more powerful. It gives you a little bit more control and um, lots more capabilities. I think it's a little more. The learning curve might be a little more involved. But this is something that you want to um, work on and kind of continually work on. So if you get something just to get started with, that's fine, and you can continue to update it and fine tune it as you build more projects and have more work to show. So I recommend using some type of um, like a flow chart to plan how people would navigate. So we have the home page and then links on that home page to uh, the about and work page and then more child pages out of the work page, right? We have the featured image, the header, the description, uh, the extra images in the uh, samples there, and then also the contact page. So this is a great way to kind of block it out. You can just block it out on paper. You can use um, some other mood board or design software that we looked at. And you can even use PowerPoint like I did here to kind of just map out a, uh, you know, infographic style smart art that'll give you an idea of how your electronic web page would flow. So you want to make sure that your user has a uh, clean and a um, kind of pleasant experience as they pass through your website. Another great way to, to ensure this is to show it, to show it to me, show it to your classmates, and uh, see how they feel about the look and feel and the navigation of your site. So keep me posted if you need anything, and good luck creating your electronic portfolio. Um, this is also going to be a great way to um, do the final project because this will have your uh, work kind of uh, compiled in one area and you can almost you know walk through it like I'm doing here and narrate it um, and then use that as part of your final video sizzle reel, uh, your video resume reel. So nail it.